Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day today. Um, I just want to come to encourage you guys in the Lord today to let you know, uh, with time, everything is speeding up. It seems like, you know, um, but just keep holding on. Okay. Uh, just know that Jesus is coming. The promise that he made will be fulfilled. So just relax, people. You know, uh, those that are in like in panic mode. Oh, what am I going to do you know, next month? Yeah, there are going to be some tough times coming ahead. Okay. Um, pretty much, you know, the enemy is no longer playing this guessing game with anyone. You know, the plan is pretty much been, you know, displayed openly now to where he's ready to just pretty much come and do what he needs to do. Do you understand? So with that being said, we know that the rapture has to happen first. Okay. And please, if you're against the rapture, just keep it to yourself because I'm, I will delete your comments if you post it on my on my on my uh, on my comment section. I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time. Before we get you know dive into anything, let's give you the gospel first. It is found in First Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4, and that is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Now let me tell you something. One thing about Jesus that you must realize is this: He's not just a figure of speech. Okay. Jesus actually walked this earth with us, okay? He walked this earth, lived among us, he wrapped himself in flesh, was born of a virgin, okay? Without sin, perfect in all his ways, and went and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, all of it, past, present, and future. His, uh, the atonement that was done on the cross was a one-time atonement paid in full, okay? So Jesus did not die for and suffer for a partial atonement. I mean, come on, guys. Don't insult God like that, you know? So God had to pour his own wrath. He didn't pour his wrath for a partial atonement. No, all of the sins are forgiven. So for all the righteous people out there who think their self-righteousness will get them anywhere, I'm here to tell you, you are treading in hot water, man. You need to repent and trust in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. All of it. Okay? Jesus paid it all for us. Okay? You remember that, uh, that song? Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. Okay? Remember that song? Yeah, exactly. He paid it all, people. Okay? While sin have left a crimson stain on us, he washed it white as snow. He washed us white as snow, y'all, you know. So why am I saying this? I'm telling you guys because Jesus is coming back, okay? And I need you guys to hold on. There are many false teachers that just keep popping up. Like, the Bible warns us in the last days this is going to happen, okay? So don't be alarmed when you see this. Just see it as a sign that we are closer to the rapture, okay? Um, now I'm no longer like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> when, when certain things happen. Why? Because I expect the worst not every day, to be honest with you, you know. I just do, you know. It's not going to affect me, you know, because I trust God. But I expect the worst news every day now. Every day you turn around, it's something new that just pop up. Like, hmm, one more <laughs> Proven that we're closer to living, you know. So, with that being said, eyes on Jesus, like for real, okay? Stop looking at yourself. Instead of focusing on yourself, focus on Jesus, and you look less on yourself and more on Jesus. And when your eyes is more on Jesus, you will find out there are things that you will become um, less interested in the more your eyes is on Jesus. That's one thing I've come to realize, you know. But when you're looking at yourself, you are pretty much counting to to do some work to keep yourself a certain way. You know, the enemy is very crafty that way. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. And when the enemy is telling you that and you're looking at yourself constantly, your focus is not on Christ. So therefore, not everything you do at that point is pretty much you doing it and you're going to keep failing. That is the whole purpose of God wanting to let us know that we are incapable of saving ourselves. Okay, and once you believe the gospel, which is found in First Corinthians fifteen verses one through four, you are born again. Okay, you see your sins needs to be forgiven to be deemed righteous. 
Okay? If your sins are now forgiven, all of it, then you are unrighteous. You see? <laughs> Guys, please understand this. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all of your sins are forgiven. Stop listening to people that are telling you you must keep repenting of sin. There is nothing required for salvation apart from belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you have, you have been fully persuaded within yourself that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins, all of it, past, present, and future. Therefore, you have your own gratitude towards God to thank him because Jesus paid it all for you. Now you just rest in him. Okay, rest in Christ and just live a life as the Holy Spirit leads you. Because sadly, you know, some people won't do that. You know, they're going to grieve the Holy Spirit nonstop. Does that make them less saved? No, it doesn't. You know, salvation is a free gift. Okay, and everybody that gets saved gets sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption, which is coming, by the way. So with that being said, um... I'm going to give you guys a scripture on 2 Peter. Uh, is it 2 Peter? Anyway, yeah, 2 Peter. So, uh, I'm going to actually play because I don't feel like, you know, repeating it. I already read it, but I'm going to play it so you guys can hear it, okay? Please stay encouraged. These final moments is critical. Um, again, everything that's happening, guys, you know, is going to just get worse. This is why I'm telling you guys constantly, trust God, Okay? Don't trust in yourself. Don't even trust in man. I don't care how good they are to you. Don't trust man. Now, it's okay to, you know, have a level of trust a little bit on people. But don't put your full trust in man. Your full trust should be on God because he's a sustainer. He's a provider. He's a protector. Okay? And he's our deliverer and our redeemer. So, please, focus on Jesus Christ. He is coming soon and judgment is coming upon the world. That's a given. Okay? Um... You talk about some, man, there's some stuff that's really going on that really, human trafficking, child tra uh, sex traffickers, I mean, these are people that go all the way to the high echelon of government, y'all, okay, I mean, these are famous people, <laughs> dude, this, the rabbit hole gets, goes deeper than you think, people, you know, some people are just, and this is why it's kept hush hush a lot, because the people that are part of this, you know, mess, don't want it to, you know, get out. So they always cover for each other. That's why you don't hear nothing about it. You can hear about it, but when names start popping up, it get discredited right away because it's the same people protecting each other. So again, God is going to bring justice. That's a given, okay, one way or another. But judgment is coming and all these people with their wickedness, if they don't repent, they're all in trouble. Stop telling people they can lose their salvation because you cannot. Okay? Once you save, you sealed. You sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Okay? And that day of redemption is coming. Okay? Our blessed hope will be here very soon. With that being said, focus on Jesus and stop living, bringing bad testimony because people need to get saved around you too. Okay, just because we have this grace does not mean we don't want to appreciate what God has done for us and also share with others. Share with others so people can get saved around you too. Okay, I mean, how would you want, you know, you know, I mean, think about Lot, for example. Okay, when he went to go speak with his son in law before the judgment, his son in law didn't want to listen to him again. Lot was carnal. Okay. But his son-in-law didn't take him serious at all. You know, just laughed it off. Like, I mean, please. And look what happened. He get destroyed too, okay? With the rest of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. So, please, you know, I know we all love God, okay? And the, <laughs> the only way that we can love him the same way he loves us is the spirit that's in us, which is the Holy Spirit. That is what truly loves him the same way. Because that is his spirit, okay? Because physically we say, well, we love God with all our heart, all our mind, so we actually don't, you know, to, to be honest with you, you really don't. Any negative thoughts, any bad thoughts, any thoughts of sin, anything you do against the, 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 the perfection of God, you're not showing that love. Do you see what I'm saying? 
So, but it's the Spirit of God that perfects us from the inside. Okay? So, with that being said, um, please keep holding on. And let's go to the scriptures right here because I need you guys to really just be vigilant, okay? There are many people popping out of woodworks. Do not listen to any gospel that adds anything to the gospel. You are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That's it, okay? By believing. Read the book of Acts. As a matter of fact, when you talk about Cornelius, start from chapter 10, okay? Just to understand what took place. I want you to understand something. I know we always talk about Acts 16, 31, but look at chapter 10, okay? When Peter went to preach to Cornelius and his friends and his family, okay? They simply believed. That's it. Okay. There is no, you know, English translation to change belief from this and that. No, their belief is, you know, again, like I say, you are fully persuaded. Okay. You are persuaded that the testimony that God gave concerning his son is 100% truth. Okay. And you accept that. That is what believing is. Okay. So when we tell you believe the gospel, we are telling you that you have to Pretty much um, be persuaded within yourself that what God said concerning his son, that testimony, that we all have to bear this testimony, okay? Every single believer has a testimony of Christ in him, okay? We bear his testimony, and therefore we are heirs according to promise, okay? Please, guys, no more. Focus, focus. There's a lot of things I would like to say, but I'll just hold it for another day, God willing. With that being said, here goes scripture. Second Peter 3. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, Seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, 
and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, okay, um, again, just stand on the gospel, okay? Stand on the gospel. God got this, y'all, okay? Soon we'll be home. With that being said, y'all have a blessed day, and I hope this blesses someone today, okay? Peace. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. You will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation.